You are now listening to the Border Town Pro Wrestling Podcast. You can't say that on there. Stop it. You're going to get me in trouble with the sponsors again. Can I say that on the air? It's your show. Here are your hosts. The Infamous J. Board and Classic Chris. Fuck it on air. <laughs> Who cares? Him and Miss J. Moore here. We're <coughs> Sorry. J. Moore always coming up along here. With the Master of Ceremonies of Border Town Pro Wrestling, Classic Chris, and this is the Border Town Wrestling Podcast. Volume issue edition number five, baby. Yes. Still on no, track. I didn't think we'd get, make it this far, Jay. They were like, oh, no, 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 these two will bow it after three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we you kicked know, out. The, the, we're the, still the, in the game, bro. Like, you know, the, the dislikers, the non-believers, you know, they thought we'd be done and over with. Oh, so, uh, so here we are. Back again with another uh, another podcast. Interesting, here. you say that. Uh, NFL Sunday. The last podcast got the yeah. most hates out of the, out of the previous podcast. Love them. But it's like, um, you know, it's it, and immediately when you put a podcast out, immediately it goes to like four haters where you know that they're just waiting. For some reason, we're on their notification because you just want to put that dislike well, on. Well, cause, you know, because you know they they listen to the podcast and they got to the part where I was talking about jokes and I was like, why are you so angry? Well, you said you said some off-color things, actually. Hey, yeah, but you, you got me in trouble with a few of my sponsors, personally, that we're going to talk about later on in the show. Oh, you, you did. You can't tell a joke anymore, Canada. But I, it, it's like, even but it with... wasn't hate speech, it's like jokes, you know. But that's like a story that happened, like, back in the 70s. The 70s. I don't want to talk about weed on the air anymore, because I don't like to come off like, um, oh, we're trying to be cool like all these other podcasters, but I know that the workers hate it. And, right, I need to still be able to adjust on a lot of So there's that for the record, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, man, it's the Border Tail Wrestling Podcast. We got a big show coming up on the 28th of September Brawl at the, the 40 Arena Center. It's the Brawl in the Fall, baby. What's, what's that venue again, Jay? Fort Erie Friendship Native Center, is it not? Native Friendship Center. Native Friendship Center. Uh, okay, at least you got all the words right. Everybody knows that it's down there on Buffalo Road. It's... it's it's the it's the, like the second home of Kong Kong. It's the house that Kong built. Absolutely, man. Border Town Wrestling heavyweight champion, which uh, and on tour, baby. Yeah, and uh, on tour. and uh, speaking of guys being on tour, uh, big news update. Uh, Tyson nice Dukes, he's going on tour. You know. Uh, okay, oh, tell me about this. Oh, Newfoundland there, they're being hit hard with the hurricane. I guess it's just reaching over there. Yes. And they need pro wrestling back. Yes. And, uh, so, so they're calling in the machine. That yes. night they need the rest of the machine to, to lighten the moves because they, they need this. Yeah, they need they, it. They, they, do, they do need Tyson. He is the so machine. Fans, we're postponing the Jim Strider Tyson Dukes Championship match for the Niagara Regional Championship. But what we are doing, though, is the former champion, Derek, never got his rematch. And you know that felt for like almost a year. So if anyone's deserving of a crack at Strider first, it should be Derek, Mr. Punch Chop Kick himself. I have, uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, that face, face of news. I think I can even speak for the fans as far as I'm concerned. Nobody is disappointed that Tarek's on a card. Uh, no. Everybody loves I'm Tarek. glad to have him back. Yes, I am too, man. Uh, you know, coming off an ankle injury, it's great to have Tarek back. I mean, he was a former champion at this company, was he not? First ever champion. First ever Niagara Regional champion. Held it five. Yeah. He wants that belt back. He never got his rematch. Now it's time. I say we do it. What I like about that title is it actually represents the Niagara region. You know, we've seen that belt. We got the Niagara Regional press right, right in the middle. Then the Niagara Region press, sorry. Then we have uh, Fort Erie, New Mullen, Niagara Falls, and St. Catharines. All the all the town up there, right on the side. Of and Rep- really represent. I can't tell like you how you represent like with him. Well, well, I was just gonna mention that. I was just gonna say like uh, as I am a member of the media, as yes. a community ambassador here in Niagara. The thing is, I know that that title has gotten around the community Mm -hmm. and through the media as people are taking that serious, that that title represents the region and Tarek being uh, an amazing wrestler has gotten a lot of recognition and a lot of new eyes on him from the Niagara region that said, oh my God, this guy's amazing. Fans love him. Yeah. Like uh, even watching back uh, the the old footage of him against him, great matches. Oh, great matches like on Border Town TV. Some of my two. absolute favorite matches that I managed to conquer Kong and has been Tarek, man. And he's on the Tarek's awesome. Yes. Like that's why he's Mr. Punch Top, the stiffest striker in the business. I love the way you say it. You should be managing Tarek. 
That's what you should be doing. I'll leave the managing to you. And okay. I'll leave, and then I'll leave the, the, you know, the commentary and the ring announcing to me. Oh, no, we got you on commentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dynamic deal, we're all over the place here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, I can't wait, man. Uh, but that's the Border Town TV, it's been awesome. You want to get into it right now, Border Town TV? Should we talk about the next episode? Episode, uh, what is that? Four coming. Yeah, episode four. Right. We're getting into Ender the Machine. Enter the Machine, uh, the, the show based uh, around Tyson Dukes. Exactly. Well, the main event of that show was uh, Colin Collins so versus uh, Tyson Dukes. The main event. Yeah. Awesome match, awesome match. And that's going to be its own solo episode, but on you guys are going no, uh, this week's episode, episode 4, we're going to see Corey Stone taking on Clay Wilson. Okay. And then the main event of, one, of that episode is going to be Carter Mason extracting a little revenge on Lionel Knight. So if you remember on episode 1, Carter Mason and Phil Atlas locked up first first match of the championship tournament. Atlas went over. Mason was pissed, you know. Hey, I'm not going to become champion, so he attacked Atlas. And while he was attacking him on the outside of the ring, sure, he did the right thing, but all night, he up the barricade, so to speak. Uh, Clothesline uh, Carter Mason and save the day for Phil Atlas. But the reason why Phil Atlas lasted to the end against Colin Kong was because Lionel Knight saved the day. If it wasn't for him, Carter Mason would have took him right out of that match. Let me tell you something about Carter Mason. He's yeah. one of the greatest wrestlers uh, that I've seen quite frankly, oh, period. Great. And he's a guy that no matter what company he works for, oh. always works his way to the ranks and always competes no, in, in, the, in the best matches. You know, And one thing I know about Mason and Lionel Knight as I've seen them wrestle each other. I've seen them as a tag team. I've seen these guys around the territory and around Ontario for years. And always give you your money's worth. Like those guys throw down. Yeah, they throw down. That's going to be a great match. And that's coming up on Border Town TV which drops this Thursday night at 8 p.m. on our YouTube channel. Absolutely amazing, man. And you know what? Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. I think the people are liking it. Oh yeah, oh, people are loving it. I'm getting, I'm getting so many DMs of uh, yeah. tough people tell me thank you for finally opening up the vault. Yeah. And like I said, the reason why we waited so long, we don't want, we didn't want to give you guys any real ones. Did you want us to air footage like, like, like six months ago? So by the time we get it up to a point that we don't have anything to air, like imagine sitting two months with nothing to air. Like that's terrible. Like people forget about you. Poor town for wrestling. We don't forget about you guys. We love our fans. Well. What's interesting to me is uh, Sammy Morano, who's a little, one of a, one of our Border Town super fans. Oh, was, loves it. But he he explained it to me uh, the last time I saw him at the gimmick table was that he did not see a lot of early uh, Border Town shows. He couldn't make it out here. The company was just getting off the ground. Now we start rolling with a fan base. Sammy Morano, being a super fan, has come in and says. You know, it's great that you guys are airing this stuff because I did never saw early Border Town and people are getting educated on what yeah, happened last year. Now they get the luxury of commentary with the team. Yeah. Which is awesome. And over a hundred matches are in this vault. There's been over a hundred matches in this wrestling room. Can you believe this? Oh, she, she's a... She's a yeah, man. So check that out, Border Town TV. Uh, let's break down some of the card uh, oh, things that you got planned. I know we're not gonna announce everything. No, we can't. You know, we got we can't give you everything in one night. And I still got some stuff in the works that I gotta go with you off of air. You know what I mean? I know, but, I know. I let me get to wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before we get to the card, actually, okay, yeah. let me get to some of the trouble that you gave me with the sponsor of the last <laughs> okay, okay, episode. Okay, okay. Talking about the Grape Wine Festival. You know that I still am not. <laughs> They have, they have pulled my booking away from the Grape and Wine what? Festival because of some of the comments you made on episode 4. What? Yes. And that's where we're getting the dislikes on the views because some of the comments that you made that regarding the Grape and Wine Festival. That in their childhood in the 70s. I'm not going to talk about no, it on this episode. Nowadays. I'm not burying myself, but I want to bring it out on air. And I want an actually uh, on-air public apology for you actually well, getting me... the booking because of... Uh... Someone getting butt hurt over a story that happened in the so 70s. I honestly apologize. I thought we could still tell a, tell a story. Like, you know, something's funny, you know, ha ha ha. Like, it wasn't like saying, I wasn't saying that people would go do that. I was just telling you it's just a funny story that I was told back a few years ago. Listen, the audience can rewind the, the last episode yeah, of before and then they can see what's going on. But let me tell you something. Me yeah, being. Whatever happened to Little Rascal? Me being, no, you can't. Yeah, no, nobody's watching the Lilith's Hobo anymore. Okay. Lilith's Hobo, that's a dog, man. I'm talking about the little rascal. Thank you, Alfalfa. You can't say that on there. Stop it. You're gonna get me in trouble with the sponsors again. Again, seriously. Well, I just picked up a great sponsor, but I, I'm gonna get to back to this story here. Uh, uh, I need everybody to call in now because I was the king of the Labor Day parade for the last eight years. I uh, obviously am out of that booking. Uh, and now, 
I, I worked my way up to the Great Wine Festival, which is the biggest parade in all of Niagara. And I was booked through Giant FM, and because of the comments Classic Chris made on this podcast on the last episode, I've now been pulled from the Great Wine Festival. So what I need now, before you go any further and dig a deeper hole for me, I need my audience, the podcast audience, the Border Town Wrestling audience, our audience, to call and bother the station and bother Pat Porter to get me back on the Grape and Wine Festival. Email the station, call the hotline, 732-6917, and demand that I am back on the Grape and Wine Festival on the Giant FM float. I need that done. Thank you. Tweet Pat Porter. Tweet Pat Porter. You know, Pat Porter's being a putz right now. Yes, he is. That's who the real putz is. Yes, yes. Uh, I just I managed to see Pat Porter. Can you say that on here? It's your show. No, no, but like, I don't want to get you in trouble now. Like, if, if I say anything, like, you might be losing bookings to this uh, soft culture. Listen, like, I have a great. Heck, like, we're gonna have to change the scene. Stop it! You gotta stop it because I gotta talk about. Okay. I gotta talk about <laughs> my brand new sponsor that I don't want you to screw things up with me okay. with. Okay. Uh, uh, Club Fifty Five, Highway Fifty Five in Niagara Lake. It's uh, hit the twelve, which is a uh, little yeah. pay of myself. Sponsoring this, we're just sponsoring everybody, okay? Border Town sponsors hit the 12. Hit the 12 sponsors Border Town. Hit the 12 is the booking committee for the bands at Club 55, and I want everybody to check out Club 55 on my new post. Yeah, thank you. And the new course looks great. Is it going to debut on this podcast, actually? Well, you know, because one of the matches I didn't want to announce yet, so we're gonna we're gonna wait on that one. We're teasing. What are you gonna announce? Because it seems like you're teasing no, 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 a lot. You it's been... your story though, but your uh, your sponsor though. Like, so what you want this time? Your plug. I look mad. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, so uh, this weekend I did the soft opening, and uh, we had some of the cards. Uh, I don't even remember the guy's name. I'd have to call him for that, but I, I don't even. Uh, you like know, band the cards or actual cards? No, no, no. We had some of the exotic cards out front, oh, okay. and then we had a bunch of people coming in. Right? Uh, we, I yeah, I know you like some of the songs. Um, but if you wanted to hear the cards, we had Riley Michaels in performing. He was the first uh, Niagara artist uh, to step on the uh, Club 55 stage. And I'm going to go on record that this Club 55 is probably one of the best venues for me right now. Yeah. Well, I know what you're a fan of is that building because it used to be the old private office. Yeah. But I don't want to get you in a private eyes moment because they're going to say something bad on oh, no, no. here. Uh, you're the, the shock shock. Guys, you're the new shock guys. jock of podcasts. I'm giving you that title. I'm just... You're the... I'm like... Right, me? I... Shock jock? I started out like this. I started where, you know, I used to think shock comedy would be good for podcasts, but now with that is sponsored, I have to watch what I say. Much like Howard Stern is not good anymore. <laughs> and I don't... And I, it pains me to hey, say that. the reason why I canceled series. First off, it's the reason why I got my series subscription and the reason why I canceled it. Like yeah, you, I, I got rid of mine. Is that? I, I I got mine three months free with my uh, when I bought my car, and I had to let it go because. And I want to like Stern. I grew up on Howard Stern, but I grew up on K Rock Howard Stern, much like I, I, you that's did. That's what I need. I need the old. I need the old. Yeah. Howard Stern. Like even the old Fox episodes of Howard TV was awesome. Let me ask or you something. Show. Yeah. Do you would you ever think in your like I'm pretty sure that Howard Stern was was big in your life in those days. Yes. Yeah. Would it ever? Would you call me a liar if you would? Would you ever thought you would see the day where you would say Howard Stern is a pussy? Like, is is so politically correct, so washed down, because he's protecting, he's an absolute billionaire at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you literally cut the balls out from Howard Stern and money made him do that. The corporate, the well, corporate. Exactly neutered. I'm against Sirius Satellite. Well, Sorry. Well, the thing, too, like, the thing that bugged me the most about everything was when he was going over Sirius, like, come on, everyone. I'm going and I'm taking you with me. It's yeah. gonna be an awesome ride. The first, like, the his speech. I can't, I can't mention their names on the radio because, like, you never know, like, copyright infringement or, of course, or, uh, like, one of their nicknames might be offensive. But he's like, "You are the last of a dying breed." <laughs> High pitch, Eric. You are the last of a dying breed. Yes. Like, Hank the drunk, Hank the drunken dwarf. Yes. You're the last of a dying breed. And then we go over to Sirius Satellite. The first episode was epic. It literally was. Uh, I'm not going to get into the logistics. Uh, you, you guys can look it up. But logistics. It was all about, okay. it was all about High Pitch Eric. Uh, uh, could he, actually, no, I'll just tell you. The bit was, uh, could High Pitch Eric go to the bathroom more than a baby elephant? And Howard bought him a bunch of food. 
and just uh, but the stories in between. That's disgusting. Oh, I'm gonna make you lose another sponsor, so I better not do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it. Like, yeah. if we, if, you know what? We'll put the heat on Howard Stern yeah. for that one. Well, that's I'm glad. Not what it was. I'm glad you cleaned up your act, Howard, because you sound so much better interviewing Julia Louise Dreyfus than Crackhead Bob. Oh. You know, Crackhead Bob has some love stories. Right, right. All right, let's get into it. September <laughs> card, man, coming up on the 28th. BorderTownWrestling.com. The tickets are actually on sale right now. And uh, you can just buy them online. You can be as easy as that. You can even the DM their promoter. DM their promoter, and uh, he'll set you up with e-transfer. Yeah. Do what you got to do, bro. But the tickets even, are... Even some people, you know, have even been down to reserve tickets for people if you just want to... Reserve your VIP and, um, and uh, get them at the, at the door. door. Yeah, we can yeah. do that too. It's no problem. No, we're making it easy, man. Yeah. And, 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 and is it's it, the best show in Niagara. Better make it easy. Is it still as low as ten dollars ticket still. price? And, yeah, still. Oh, you sound so unhappy. No, about no that. it's still ten dollars. You want no. more money for the tickets? No. Dude. It's worth more okay. money, I think. Well, it is worth more money, but I think about a family of five. I want that family of five to be able to come there for fifty dollars instead of a hundred dollars. Oh. I want them to be able to go there. Buy some food, have a t- like buy a T-shirt right. because I know the cost of living is high. Everyone jacked up their prices, but I'm saying screw that. No, I, I'm about the families and the people. Like, hey, I work a job, and also I promote pro wrestling, right. and I know how it is. You got to pay bills and stuff, so why not have ten dollar tickets in advance? Oh, uh, dude, uh, <coughs> one, like that to me, it works. It, it's, it's the it best works, bang for your buck. It works totally down the system because. I think because uh, some families were allowed to save on the last show. Of course. Kong and myself sold all of our merch right off the table, and that's because they have an extra few dollars to buy the uh, the merchandise oh, that they want from their favorite somebody, wrestlers. Instead of like making them pay ridiculous amounts for tickets, and it's like, okay, I almost spent a paycheck just to take me and my family to a wrestling show, so now I can't even buy a burger. Uh, you know what? Listen, what we're trying to say is this show's not hard to get into, man. No. DM the promoter, DM <laughs> Class of Chris online. And uh, we will hook no, you up with the center show. It's all about wrestling, and we don't. And you know what? It's the promotion. It's the promotion of no promos. Brawl in the fall, baby. Yes. And this is one of your Except, favorite names. Oh, for I love show. it. Yeah, I love yeah. the logo Jaybird made. Shouts out to Therese. Awesome job as usual. Uh, no, I love that logo. Cause like you know me, uh, you know, I grew up with uh, WCW and stuff like that. I, I always like um, Paul Brawl. Yeah. And Brawl in the Fall is kind of like a an homage to that. Like, yeah, yeah, no, you love WCW. Well, oh, that, like, they, they, they had some of the, the best pay per views. Well, yeah, I like know, Halloween Havoc. I like uh, the Great American. But they were your kind of, like, you were like a Rick Rude fan. You were like a Mr. Perfect fan. You were that they're kind the of fan. the first company to give Rick Rude a championship. Yeah. Like, the world title. Like, he never got it in the, in the E or the Fed. But at WCW, they did not hesitate to. Like, him as a tag team? Or the, at least the unit. I don't think they were a tag team, but they seem to do a lot of promos together. Oh, him and Kurt Henning? Yeah. Oh, uh, they, they, those two guys, are, they're Minnesota boys. Yeah. They just quit. But you like that. Oh, I lo- love those two yeah, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's when Ruda, like, he was out with his, like, he's already retired at that time, like, when he was together in WCW. Because, uh, uh, you know, Ruda had that back injury when he fought Sting you know, with that rotating ring. That's, that's the stage that broke his back. That's okay. one of the reasons why they stopped using it. Like, uh, it's ridiculous that... Sting, one of the safest workers, and Rick Rude, one of the safest workers, end up getting injured because you have a rotating stage. <laughs> they come off. Yeah. Like, that ended one of the greatest careers of pro wrestling. And then, you know, he's the first guy to be on Raw and, Raw and Nitro in the same night. Okay. Like, Rick Rude's the man. Oh, he was great. And then him and, him and Kurt Henning together, that was just solid money. Yeah, exactly. And what were we talking about? I don't know, I got sidetracked talking about Rick Well, Rude. no, I, I want to talk to you about Rick wrestling, Rude, and, I but I'm, I want to save that to later in the show. He's the only dude that would put his, his opponent's wife on his crotch, on his tights. It's, it's the best heel move you could ever do. I got a lot of comments on this podcast about people liking what you have to say about the current product, and I like talking to you about it because okay. I don't follow much of the current uh-huh. product because I've transitioned my business yeah, into yeah. hitting the 12 and whatnot, and when it comes to pro wrestling... You see me at Border Town. Yeah. I'm Border Town branded at this point. So uh, I, I want to talk for a product, but I do want to talk about what's going on here in yeah. September. Let's get right down to it, the 28th, and what you got plans thus far before we get to any some uh, okay. some major money well, matches coming up on the next well, few podcasts. This one's a big money match, but I don't want to mention it after I mention this match. Our VIP show. Ethan Dukes is going to go through the factory again as he takes on Jordan James. So you're telling me that Ethan Tyson Dukes, is, Dukes is on uh, is on tour out east. Yes. But Ethan Dukes is still uh, a book for this show and yes. promising to be yes. here. Beautiful. And he's taking on Jordan James. 
Jordan James. Yes. He's from the factory? Yes, he is. Okay. He's a tag partner of Alex Realm, so you know with those two, uh, Realm is never that far away. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, with Tyson not being there, Ethan doesn't have to watch, like, you know, he has uh, the pillars to watch his back or something. There is because, a... Uh, there you is, know, they gotta look out for his boy, for Tyson's boy while he's alone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now listen, Hitting the 12 being a, a sponsor of uh, this event here and Hitting the 12 uh, being billed as um, opening up at the VIP show, man. Uh, Little K obviously has been on sick, been in and out of duties. But you know what? I, I I don't know. You probably don't want me to say this, but I think I want to tiptoe my way out to the VIP and 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 promise the people, just like we said, hitting the twelve will be there. I'm the other part of hitting the twelve, and I'm saying I want to be there and you I want to and do some hosting. Not only do I want to do some hosting, I want to ask you a couple questions, some, okay. some booking ideas. But I'm going to yeah. make it public on okay. air. If you say no, that's fine. Okay. You know. Well, it depends what we're getting into here. I want to. I, I feel that we should uh, market this match between Ethan Dukes and what did you say? Uh, uh, Jordan James. The other gentleman's name is Jordan James. Yes. That is, uh, even though let's pay tribute to Tyson because he is on tour, that this is a Tyson Dukes factory wrestling match. Well, for the VIP. It, it definitely is because uh, Alec Graham is, or I mean Jordan James, is a former student. He's one of the, one of the ones that turns back on Tyson and. And Ethan Dukes is the recent graduate out of the Tyson Dukes Wrestling Factory. And what I would like this to personally do, if I'm going out there to host the VIP, I think I need to deliver a little bit more to the fans than just uh, a Tyson Dukes Wrestling match. I would like to get an exclusive. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I don't know how Tyson feels about this or you feel about this. But I would like to actually interview uh, Ethan Dukes right there. Just a couple questions and uh, or interview the interview the match because, man... Uh, Hey, this is Ethan well, Deuce. He delivered. He delivered last time he was here at Takedown yeah. VIP show. No, he did. He did. He came out put on an impressive show against Kyle Boone. Uh, yeah. Deuce came out ready to fight, and that's and he's just like his, he's his father's son. That's yeah. The, and what's interesting, like to my heart, and I mentioned this to you off yeah. air, and uh, you, I don't know that you want this mentioned off air, but it's I kind of got some sentimental meaning to me because uh, Tyson Deuce, when I managed him at the Neo Wrestling Federation. When Neo Wrestling Federation had VIP matches for the VIP crowd, Tyson Dukes always volunteered to wrestle uh, in those matches. Yes, and, he did. I and remember those days. He brought up a lot of the old Neo students that way in the VIP matches. And to me, to me, seeing it fast forward years later, Tyson Dukes' son in the VIP matches here in Border Town Wrestling oh, awesome. is touching to my heart. It absolutely is. Like this is nostalgia. I know something new all the this same This is time. unbelievable. It touches my heart. I, I'm a big fan of Tyson Dukes. I love working with Tyson Dukes. I've managed him for many, many years. And I would love to do more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the rest of the card. You got well, more? Uh, here's, a, here's another big match. This is the, the only other one I'll ma mention right now. Um, Scotty O'Shea will be taking on Tyler Turbo. Oh, that's a good match. You know, Tyler Turbo put on an awesome show against uh, Kobe Durst. Yeah, that was a Scotty great... Scotty O'Shea came up. He was so close to becoming number one contender for the Niagara Regional Championship. So I say, why don't we let these two lock up? I would love to see that match, absolutely. It's going to be an awesome match. Tyler Turbo, the fan support that he's gotten at this company has been outrageous. They blew the roof off the Native Center last time he was here. You know, Tyler... You know, that could have been the night Tyler Turner was truly over at Border Town. That's hands down one of his best matches. It was. Yeah, I, I love it. It could Kobe be his Durst best match. Uh, Kobe Durst brought out the best in Tyler Turbo, so let's see what, what he can do with the hacker. That's going to be, an, that's uh, it's gonna gonna be amazing. It's going to be awesome. Worth, yeah. the, worth that $10 ticket alone. Yeah, yeah, it is. It absolutely is. So you're talking uh, O'Shea Turbo. We got Ethan Dukes in the uh, That's VIP, the VIP matches. That, yeah, so those tickets cost more. Like the VIP match. Okay. Well, like if the you VIP, don't see... you get more. You get more bang for your buck with the VIP. Okay. You, know, you get the early access. You get the the raffle ticket for the show poster, bonus matches. It's great. And the, the those VIP matches aren't for the general admission. Before we go on, uh, the last show takedown. <laughs> There was a couple of those mental club uh, idiots sneaking through the back door that I don't think paid for tickets. Really? So, uh, yeah, I know. I need that guard. to step up security. That's then, right. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, because you never know. Uh, like those, those guys, those guys they're, don't. They're they, 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 yeah, they feel like they could just walk in and not pay. You know but hey, I mean? uh, I'm sick of that. You're taking money away from the boys. <laughs> no, you really are. No, but uh, you know when it comes to, like when they do pay though, uh, they, they're actually not that bad of uh, fans if you just get to know them. Uh, oh, they I just got. Voice it. their opinion. 
You're going mental club on me. No, no. No, you are. I, I just, you got I, a shirt coming. I just support. You got a shirt coming. I just support. If you Dan's show up in the mental opinion. club hoodie on the next show, I, I this is gonna be unbelievable. Well, I can never, I can wear, never wear uh, a wrestler that I uh, in place the merch that would uh, that show favoritism and bias, wouldn't that? Yo, I got a question for you. Of course. Speaking on that, okay. it wasn't two months ago that I gave you and your family. Infamous Jay Moore t-shirts yeah. with the Border Town Wrestling logo on them. Love and them. nobody has worn them. I you mean you mine. love them? I wear You've mine. never worn them. I I've never mine. seen you in a Border Town shirt. Why don't you represent it at the show? You're going to be wearing a mental club hoodie? No. Yes, you I'll are. I wear a Border Town shirt all over the place. No, I yeah, wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's worn it. It's I wear ridiculous. it. Okay, but you see my gimmick. So you want me, instead of uh, wearing my vest and everything, you want me to wear a Jay Moore shirt when I ring it out? Yes. You've had that vest long enough. Show some support, bro. Bets. I'm sponsoring your show with Hitting the 12. And, uh, and I'm not sponsoring Hitting the 12 with Border Town Pro Wrestling. Okay, get to the next match. What else have we got on the card? Well, I think that's. Uh, I think I think I'm just gonna leave it right there for now. You know, give them a couple of matches. Let them stew on that for a little. Well, bit. we're, we're gonna and, hit you know, a lot more them, podcasts. We gave them Tarek and uh, Jim Strider. You know, for the Niagara Regional okay. Championship. Ethan Dukes is gonna be on the VIP show. And then we got uh, Scotty O'Shea and Tyson and then Tyler Turva. It's gonna be awesome. Number one. By you not spilling the beans on all the matches right now makes me work harder because now I have to do more podcasts because you're literally only giving a couple matches making well, uh, because you know, you know that we're taking over in the podcast field in Ontario. Oh, we are. And you know that if you only announce a couple matches means I have to come back for the next two and then the next two and the next two. And then, two. And then in one show you get five podcasts with my contract only stated for to do one before the, the show. Well, hey, uh, negotiations happen all the time, but... You want to be a shock jock. That's the problem, too. No, no, no. You're getting... There's, no, there's, you, you, there's a mic in your hand, and... Uh, I don't and, uh, swear. You said some pr- pretty bad things that cost me a sponsorship and it cost me a book. Hey, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't use any words. I just told the story. I just let you guys know what happened. I didn't use any words, what, what the sign said, but they can they can go check out episode four if they want to look into that. All right. To see if it's really that controversial or not. It is controversial. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back because I'm going to rapid fire you some questions, which is an idea I stole from uh, BS Live, but hopefully they don't hear it. And I want to wrap it and ask questions, you know, about current product because a lot of the fans like a lot, of, a lot of people have done that. Just don't get me fired from another sponsor. Quick break, and we'll be right back on the Border Town Wrestling Podcast, Episode 5. Get your tickets, bordertownwrestling.com. We make it easy, bro. Brawl in the fall, September 28th, Fort Erie Native Center. If it's Jay Moore here reminding you, the Bordertown Wrestling fans, drop in every Thursday on Bordertown, uh, the YouTube. Oh, yeah, fuck. YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube yeah, channel. The YouTube Thank you, channel. Classic yeah. Chris. Every yeah. Thursday at 8 p.m. You Nothing say it, baby. Dropping. You do the commercial. Yeah, exactly. If it's Jay Moore, keeps screwing it up, ladies and gentlemen. Every <laughs> Thursday night, YouTube channel. Check it out. Bordertown TV. BordertownWrestling.com. At least I can do that for you. And we're back, baby. Uh, Bordertown. We're at the Pydis Podcast. Well, it's the Bordertown Wrestling Podcast, baby. Episode 5. And we're going to do... Uh, I want to uh, catch up with Classic Chris here. As the fans are enjoying... Your views and opinions on the current product in pro wrestling. And I want to run through some stuff with you. Not in a Mark way. Not like all these wrestling podcasters do. Or like, uh, like, like whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, what, give, just, Why don't I you give me the rundown? I got no questions. What, what, uh, okay, WWE, what is the latest going on? And what are your critiques with the product? And what do you like? Well, um, I'm kind of disappointed with what they're doing with the Raw Tag Team Division. Because uh, they, build it up, they built up a club. Gallus and Anderson with AJ Styles. Uh, Dallas and Anderson were recently lost the Raw Tag Team Championship. AJ Styles and Braun Strowman. No problem, because at Night of Champions, you think maybe the Good Brothers will get, uh, get a rematch, but no. The elite tag team of Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, yeah, because they don't right. call him Bobby Roode anymore, they call him Robert Roode, right. are taking on Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman for the tag titles. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, like these, like neither of these tag teams were a tag team two months ago, and they're fighting for your tag team. Did you know that? Um, and they're de- like delegitimizes every tag team that's been working together for longer than eight weeks. 
Okay, those are interesting comments, and not to take you off topic, but yeah. I, I wanted. Uh, I got in a little rant there. I'll, no, I like it. I like that rant. It's exactly what I want here. But it's like um, people were telling me in the in the business, and, and a lot of the fans had noticed that SummerSlam being in Toronto. I just want to get your comment. SummerSlam being in Toronto, that yeah. they were telling me that Robert Roode, who is from Peterborough and is would be uh, mega over here in Toronto, that. He was actually on Twitter, uh, like showing pictures of himself having a barbecue and gardening at his house. Well, do you know anything about that? You're not the smartest booker in the world. Uh, last time he was in Toronto and he was like, you know, in the main event picture in the match was NXT Takeover Toronto. Right. When uh, and didn't he fight Spears? Uh, yeah, he did. And Ty Dillinger. Yeah, it was a damn good match. Yeah, they tore it down. And, you, and they were both over as uh, over as, but uh, no, they 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 were. Uh, I wasn't like he, he's from the area. Why don't you put him on the show? It's like saying hey, we're going to do a show. We're going to do a show, but uh, they get all your family and friends, and they're probably going to be there, but you can't be on it. You had me thinking uh, of that uh, that last show you're talking about, Robin Root against Ty Dillinger, yep. and I know that you know damn good match, man. Promoters don't I really like wish it. they would have worked out as a tag team. I can ask. Glorious ten would have been perfect. I can ask you a straight up question. I know that. Most promoters don't promote other people's shows, and I'm not looking for you to promote your show. I just want to give you your thoughts on uh, Destiny Wrestling with their show coming up. Uh, has actually brought in Spears against Channing Decker, and what are your thoughts well, on that match? Well, Spears has been uh, ever since he left uh, WWE. He's gone. He's kind of gotten better. I like the chairman he, thing. Yeah, no, he's, he's and he's managed better. by Tully Blanchard. That's it, amazing. It, it's great because yeah. you have now the Brain Busters going against each other. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you know, you know, Spears. he's a throwback. He's a, he's a great, like, a, he's a great all-around wrestler. Oh, we all, we, we all. Uh, the time, like his, like he gets showcased, and it's great that WWE, the, the, the Fed let him go. Like, like he got, asked for his release, and they said okay. I like him better and he here. He got and showcased, like with, like you know, like because he's in a company that is run by his former tag team partner. I feel that us uh, knowing how Spears was working with him in the Neo Wrestling Federation, I feel that he's a hard worker. He's man. happier. Yeah, I think he's happier, and I think he like he. Oh, you would, can tell he's happy. He's working with Arn and Tully, and he's loving it, man. And and these the are chairman. guys that he idolized. Yeah, up. of course, like, of course. Like you're working with uh, two of the four horsemen. Yeah. Like how how many people can say that right now? Uh yeah. How uh, many? What are your and, thoughts and, and, on... And apparently Ric Flair is pretty pissed off with the WWE, according to rumors. What, he's suing for the man thing? That's what I hear, so why not bring the third... Why not bring, like, another member of the four? Oh, I never thought of that. Movie. That would be amazing, yeah. Because then the man could come over there and... Because, uh, uh, you know, Jericho's new gimmick. Like, you can manage Jericho, would be pretty damn good. Because uh, Jericho's new gimmick kind of reminds me of old school Ric Flair. Like how, like, you know, with a little bit of the bubbly... No, I like and, that uh, booking. I like absolutely like champion. that booking. That, that is absolutely uh, brilliant. Like, like, I would like love a, to see that. Like, Rick, like, Rick, like, imagine seeing Chris Jericho coming on the limo for the AEW Championship and falling in with Ric Flair. <laughs> Give me your thoughts Woo! overall. Like, uh, you, you know that uh, AEW is coming out in October. Yeah. Uh, debuting with their TV on, really what, good. TNT? Yeah. And we know that NXT. they're going to be competing with NXT on USA Network. What are your thoughts overall? Like, well, I heard NXT is going to be very scripted. And AEW is a little bit more loose with their guys. And I know NXT, like the, the best of NXT is when they're a little bit looser. Like guys like Adam Cole and stuff like that. Why give them a script? Like these guys know how to cut a promo. If they didn't, they wouldn't be in the business. They wouldn't be where they are if they, if they didn't know how to cut a promo. Yeah. Like scripts should be handed out to guys fresh out of schools that don't know what they're doing. Right now. What would you pick as a promotion? Like you got like the choice. Like a guy like Triple H in a script is like insulting. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, I'm not going to say this. <laughs> yeah, well, there is a story I told you off here about Jeremy Borash when he first started at Impact. <laughs> when Hans Psycho Sid a script and he said, I'm not doing WCW. it. WCW. WCW, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it shows how long he's been in the business, though. Like, Yo, well, Russo, Borash is good. Russo like hired him. Borash. I like JB. Russo hired Borash uh, in three weeks of mm-hmm. him meeting him at a show or something. And three weeks later, he was sitting on the creative board in WCW. <laughs> you know what? Uh, after seeing him like an impact and hearing him do a commentary and stuff, I like, like Borash. I like he, JB's the type of guy you like, uh, like you know he passed that test. Could you have a beer with this guy? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you know, like that's that's a test I like to put on people, like to see if I can tolerate their presence. 
And Borash is a guy that helped a lot of our friends yes. that moved from here to Nashville oh. to work uh, TNA Thanks, in the day. Uh, uh, Showtime, you know what yeah. I mean? Bobby Roode, uh, all of those guys. Uh, Jerry, Jeremy Borash on an uh, uh, off camera helped a lot of our friends. He's a good mentor. Yeah, yeah, he was great. Like, he, he's, he's, like uh, that's like, like, like the feel you want in the business. So, Wednesday night it debuts. When it does debut, what is classic Chris? What is his first choice? If it has, is it going to be AEW or is it going to be NXT? Depends what's on each show. Uh, AEW. I'm not sure if that's for their next show, their pay-per-view, or their TV show, but apparently it's going to be Chris Jericho versus Cody Rhodes coming. Up. Now I got a question. And for I you. want to see that match. Haven't they just built like Spears and, and Rhodes, and they're immediately switching to? Well, here's the thing at AEW, they're doing it more like a sport. Right. This is like how hockey and everything is, and they said, well, Cody. Technically, you're undefeated. You're the only undefeated wrestler here in the AEW, I think, right now. Okay, the yeah, they're, they're taking and, uh, rankings. Seriously. Yeah, and they, they're saying, here, Chris Jericho, you're the champion this year's number one contender because he's undefeated. Right. That's why a guy like Kenny Omega, who's been, who's a badass wrestler, right. hasn't won a match who's at the bottom of the ranking system, which I kind of like that, like where wins matter. Because I've seen too many times in other federations and entertainment where guys will lose for like a year in a row, and all of a sudden he gets a title shot and becomes champion. Like, what the fuck? I mean, fudge? Is this? Yeah. Sorry, Producer Marty. No, no Producer way. Marty yelling at that. Oh, we'll get a bleep, bro. One of these days yeah, we'll yeah. get a bleep, but that's no, no, okay. No, 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 it's going to get You're the bleep. shock jock. You're the shock jock. Like, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, You're the new like, shock jock of I, Ontario. I forgot we're recording. You know, I was just talking it's wrestling. It's fine, it's fine. I don't want to, like, flip-flop all over yeah, the yeah. place, but I do want to get your opinion on uh-huh. another WWE subject. I'm just kind of curious. Uh... Yeah. You were a huge fan at one point of uh, Kevin Owens. I'm kind of curious KO? what you think of lately where it's kind of like he's doing the Austin thing. Like, I kind of like, as an old-time fan of the Attitude Era, kind of find it stupid. If where he does you're Owens just, 316, I just whooped your ass. I'm, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up, too. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, the thing is, everyone likes nostalgia. Like, uh, like sure, like it's okay to bust up the stunner, but... For you to like legit rip off his storyline. No, it's not him though. Okay. It's not Owens. It's it's the story writer. I get it. It's the writer that yeah. are doing that. It's not Owens. Like, do you honestly think that Kevin Steen wants to be ripping off Steve Austin? Like, sure, I'm like, I'm sure he likes the like the, the easier workload, but he still busts still, like a lot of the moves that he does. He just adds in the stunner. What and if he likes it? Do but, you think that he, there might be a oh, chance? Oh yeah, that he, he likes no, it. he likes it. Okay. Because uh, the guy's got a problem. He's got a bull tattoo on his arm. We know this guy loves the Attitude Era. <laughs> This guy loves The Rock, uh, and who is The Rock's greatest rival? Stone Steve Austin. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So if you can, if you can uh, go, like you know, if you can actually use some of the guy, if you get, you know, that put in your character, you're gonna run with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know, it, like, like me, I'm a big Bret Hart fan, but it sounds like, hey, I want you to start like working a little bit like Sean. Like I'm gonna take that. It's like okay, because like I I study this guy because him and Bret had some awesome matches, so. Like, I know, like, some of the stuff that Sean would do. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I physically probably couldn't do it as good, so that's why I don't do it. You can't do it. Are you kidding me? Why do you think I do comedy? Shawn Michaels. No, like, I mean, like, a kip-up, I can do that. You can do a kip-up? Not as clean. Not as clean. No, not nearly as clean, but I can do it. Okay. Well, and I'm not going to do it right now either. No, but well, we can do it as a part of our VIP package. Maybe. The next show. Maybe. Where I can call you out to see if you could, uh, if we could do like a, a, a bet. If I don't have my gimmicks on, on, if I'm in my, uh, you'll do a kip up for the VIP crowd. I, I, I could probably do it in the ring. Don't okay, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do a kip up on the VIP. You, you talked yourself into it. Well, I, I, I think I can still do it. You can do it for the fans. I think they would like to see that. I think that well, we would the fans sell. want to see it. I no, think we I would sell more VIP tickets if we, if we had Ethan do. <laughs> and the uh, classic Chris is uh feats of, uh, of, of athleticism, like what I can do. I'm interested in seeing that. I would pay to see that. I think the fans would pay to see that too. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, that's why that's, that's why I'm not a wrestler, so I don't think people would actually pay to see me in the ring, but if you want to see it, we'll, we'll do it. Let's see. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll see what uh, the future All right. Is. Yeah, well, yeah, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing right now. Making them wait for another podcast before we get a true we'll see, answer. We'll see. We'll see. All right, I, I see you grinding stuff up there, and I told you about weed on air because the boys don't like that kind of thing. But what I'm saying is I'm ready to either get your final thoughts and wrap this baby up because I'm going to do a nice tight podcast, or if you want the extended version, 
I, I guess I have to stay here for you. You're looking at the monitor like what? What are you thinking is uh, a length of time that would be good for this podcast? Because last time we got more dislikes and hates on the video. So what do you think we're, we're in oh. for here? Especially with you going into shock radio mode. Shock radio You mode. lost me sponsors, dude. I didn't lose nothing. Yeah, you did. You got me blackballed from the Grape hey, and Wine Festival. Hey. Who gets hey. somebody blackballed from the Grape and Wine Festival? It's a public event. But yeah, exactly. Are... That I can't go to now. <laughs> but I, I still can't believe that people get like They're so super sensitive. Uh, no, that, stop, that, man. We can't go there. Not, that, that, we can't go there. Yeah, we got to be over a story. We got to be serious satellite, Howard, sir, because you're constantly sponsors talking like that. Here's my question. Oh, no. We can't no, tell no, no, a story no, no. about like, what happened here. in the past. I, I shouldn't have like, Let's say, here. for example, right, you had a funny story that happened in the past, but due to political correctness nowadays, you can't say it. It's the words that you used in the Me Too movement. No, you can't say those things anymore. You're in the minority, dude. You can't say those things anymore. It's not the Artie Lang era. It's not the uh, uh, Andrew Dice Clay era. Like, the, the, we have moved into a movement in an era where we're kind and we're nice to people. But I am kind. I was kind? Telling, I was you cost a, me a booking! I was telling a you story! You mother effer! I was telling a story that was funny! Mother effer! Funny to you because you're like in a blue comedy! I was raised. I was, born, I, was, I, was born, I was raised with slapstick, baseballs, uh, you know, good stuff. Good comedy. Can you please give me Adventure your final thoughts? Nerds. You are the promoter of this promotion yeah, of Border yeah. Town Wrestling, and this is all because of you that this is happening with this podcast. I know you want more podcasts, but can you please, in a correct Me Too movement era form, give me your final thoughts? On the Hello. current business that, as a whole, what are you looking forward to seeing? What don't you like? Not in a long-winded thing, but your final thoughts. Is there something you want to talk about before we uh, hang the mics up? Before, you know, is there any... Well, they got, they got uh, Clash of Champions coming up. Okay. What does that, that mean? Um, On the network? Yeah, next weekend. Okay. Uh, last weekend, there was, a, like, a, you know, the 31st, there was some really good wrestling. There was Takedown by Border Town Pro Wrestling. Nice. There was AEW. That weekend also, uh, New Japan had a show. Yeah. Same with uh, NXT UK. And next weekend, we're going to get WWE Clash of Champions. I don't think it'll be as good as any of those other shows. Wow, that's interesting you say because that. Because I'm not looking forward to any of those matches. Do you want to see Luke, uh, Roman Reigns versus Eric Cole? No. no, that's not going to make me buy a subscription to the, to the, to the, to the network. Right, right, right. Oh, I don't even know who AJ Styles is fighting. Like, he's defending the United States Championship, but who's he fighting? Who's, what, Nakamura's the Intercontinental Champion. I didn't even know that. Like, that's how good they put promoting him as the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, I thought Nakamura was just, like, not on TV anymore. Well, apparently he's with Sami Zayn again. Now. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Which is weird. I thought Sami Zayn was a wrestler, not a manager. He's a cab driver. That's what Vince Russo says. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got the hat. <laughs> Sorry, classic Chris. It's all right. It's the 97 Rock era. Of, uh, it's the 97 Rock night here on the Board Town Wrestling Podcast. Well, you're saying we can't go Artie Lang, but yeah, here's ACDC. This is Slick Tom, baby. <clears throat> this, is this is Artie Lang, actually. We got a sense of that out. We got to bring the old school K Rock sense of Are we back. allowed to mention his name? No. Or, 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 or I don't even think of the fans know what we're talking about at this point. That's it. Episode 5, baby. The Border <laughs> Town Wrestling Podcast. Well, I was just trying to listen to the song to see if it, if it actually was Artie Lang singing. No, I don't want that. I don't want it on air. Border Town TV, new episodes drop every Thursday. Check it out on YouTube and check out BorderTownWrestling.com. Follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter. Oh, well, I mean, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, click the, click that notification button so you don't miss out on any of the, any of the episodes of Border Town TV or the podcast getting uploaded. And follow us on Twitter or on uh, Instagram. Yeah, baby, and uh, message Classic Chris, get your tickets. For uh, September 28th at the 40 Hey, it's the best pro wrestling show in Niagara. If you missed it, exactly, what baby. Are you doing? 
Friendship Native Center on Buffalo Road. What's that venue again, Jay? Friendship Native Center on Buffalo Road. Uh, 40 Native Friendship. 40 Native Friendship. 40 Native Friendship Festival. You know what I mean? It's, it's got like a triangle. It's Saturday, got, August 28th. It's got an eagle on the front oh, of the it's building. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a landmark. It's the house it that Congo Kong built, baby. Undefeated monster. Undefeated monster, baby. We have more before Brawl in the Fall on the uh, Border Town Wrestling Podcast. But this yeah, right we'll here episode is episode five. Check out Hit the 12. Check me out just before noon on the Pat Border Show, 91.7 Giant FM. Message Classic Chris. You got more? I just try to get this song over with because I love it for a finish. Let's play it out. Play it out, baby. BorderTownWrestling.com.